So you have contact from native instruments. And you want to know how in the heck do you route multiple instruments or even a drum sampler. So you have full control that way instead of having a boring stereo drum MIDI track like this. Maybe you want full control over your MIDI drum kit like this. This is nice. By the end of this video, you'll know how to do just that in Logic Pro X with an instance of contact. Now let's get into it. So in Logic Pro, let's go ahead and get an instance of contact pulled up. On this drums track, I'm gonna go to instrument, I'm going to contact, and then I'm going to pick eight stereo, 14 mono. Depending on what kind of production you're doing or what kind of instruments you're working with, that you're gonna to wanna to select the appropriate one. So if you're dealing with, you know, multiple stereo output type of instruments within contact, select the 16 or the eight, whichever one's appropriate. In this case, we're doing a drum sampler. So I wanna have enough stereo and mono outputs for the drum samples. So when the instance of contact loads up, you're going to see this little sub menu over here. We're gonna select this one right here and we're gonna select outputs. And these are the defaulted outputs. And what we need to do is we need to configure it to what we're gonna need for our instrument uses. So we're gonna go to this output plus sign. And the two things we need to focus on right now are the quantity and the number of channels. Quantity is how many tracks you wanna generate or how many output paths you need to create. And the number of channels is whether you select if it's a mono, which would be one, stereo, which it currently is, which is two. And then if you're doing some sort of like surround sound or whatever you're, you're trying to set up for whatever instruments you're using. In this case, I need four stereo. I'm not gonna use stereo one because if you use stereo one, the main track right here where it says drums, main output is essentially stereo one and two. So we're gonna pick stereo two as our first one. It's gonna create four tr stereo tracks in ascending order. And then we want it to delete this pre-existing path right now. So we're gonna hit okay. All right, so now it has deleted those and we have these set up and you can see three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I know for this particular instrument, we're gonna need 12 mono channels. So we're gonna go 12 and then one channel because it's a mono track. And then we're going to go down to unassigned and select that. And we're not gonna delete existing channels this time. I'm gonna hit okay. And you can see now we have all the channels. Now, before you go any further, what you might wanna do, if you already know what instruments you're gonna to assign to what outputs, Name those now because when you load up the instrument, if they're not already named, they're gonna stay named stereo one, stereo two, stereo three, stereo four. If that's something you're into, I'm gonna go ahead, name all these right now. Awesome, now that I have all these named, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pick a drum instrument and I'm gonna select the Bow Rochelle Signature Drum Pack. So we go to instruments and we select a regular preset. And then from there, we're gonna see all these channels in the mixer side, go to kick one. And if you look, this is why naming is important because if we had not named it, these would be all those random mono, et cetera, and it would get really confusing. So go ahead and start assigning everything. Awesome, so now every channel is assigned its proper output path and we're gonna go back into Logic and now get everything routed within the actual Logic session. So with the instrument track selected, go ahead and hit X on your keyboard and it's gonna bring up this menu right here. You'll see down here, there's a plus sign now on this track that wasn't there before. We're gonna hit that several times. And now all the tracks are available. And we're gonna go ahead and press play. And let's rename these tracks. All right, now that we've named these tracks as well, let's go ahead and select all the ones we want to create tracks for within the edit menu. Now with all these tracks selected, hit right click, create new track, hit X again, and now we can see all the drum tracks. And let's actually move these down so they're not in the way. A little bit further, there you go. And we can actually treat these like actual audio tracks and start EQing however we want. And that's all there is to it. If you made it this far and found this video helpful and enjoyed it, please do us a favor and boop that like button below for the almighty YouTube algorithm. We would greatly appreciate it and we'll see you in the next video.